welcome to this edition of Hardman Talks. I'm Keith Hiscott, the CEO of Hardman & Co. And I'm joined today by two speakers. My first guest is Annabel Brody smith who is the Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies. We'll call that the AIC from now on, the Industry Body for Investment Companies. Uh, Annabel's a veteran of the AIC, and I'm very pleased to have you here today, Annabel. I am absolutely delighted to be here, Keith. Thanks so much for inviting me. That's good to hear. Thank you. My second guest is Ricardo Bindi. Uh, Ricardo works alongside me at Harman & Co. Uh, and he and I recently published a note on investment companies that focuses on equity income. Uh, UK equity income investment companies are a big sector. And we asked whether investors should consider investing in global income funds as well as UK equity income funds. Ricardo, welcome. Thank you. So we're here to talk about using investment income, uh, investment companies to generate equity income and the excellent work that the AIC has published on what it calls dividend heroes. But Annabelle, can we start first with the UK equity income sector? For those investors who don't know, can you briefly tell us about its characteristics? Oh, yes. Well, it's a really popular sector with income seekers. Um, it's about £12 billion. So it's the seventh biggest, biggest sector of our AIC sectors. Um, it's got 20 companies, so there's lots of choice. Um, and the average yield is 4.3, which is pretty strong yield from an equity income portfolio. Um, it's currently trading on a 4.5% discount, which shows there's actually quite a lot of demand for this sector actually at the moment. And it's got some really well-known companies. So we're talking companies like Dunedin Income Growth, which celebrated its 150 birthday last year, but also some other, you know, older companies like Merchants Trust, Edinburgh Investment Trust, Lord Adventure Corporation, some familiar names there. Thank you. And Annabelle, could you do the same for some of the global sectors we mentioned as reports as well, like the, the global equity income, the global and the Asia Pacific, just to give us a bit of a flavour for what those sectors are like? Well, yeah, that would be great. Well, the global equity income sector, again, well-established sector, um, about 5.4 billion in total, six companies there, an average yield of 4%, just a little bit lower than that UK equity income sector. And again, we've got companies like Scottish American, often known as Saints, which also celebrated its 150th birthday last year. I actually went to their party. Um, but also companies like JP Morgan Global Growth and Income, which was launched in 1887, Murray International, very well-known name in the global equity income sector. Um, and it's got a dividend growth of about uh, 4%. Actually, that's the five-year dividend growth. So that's the global equity income sector. Moving on. The global sector, second biggest sector, over 30 billion. So big old sector, not just focused on income, it's a combination of income and capital growth. So the average yield is 1.3%, but of course that's really going to vary when you look at the companies. And we do have 13 companies in that sector, it's currently trading on 12.8% discount, pretty good dividend growth over five years, 7.4%. And I have to mention the oldest and uh, long investment trust with the longest history, FNC Investment Trust, which was launched in 1868, which was around the same time as the last public hanging, to so just put that in historical <laughs> context. Yeah, they were more excited about the hanging. They really should have been more excited about the investment trust, but there we go. Um, and then you also mentioned the Asia Pacific equity income sector, which is relatively new. We only launched this in March, 2021. Five trusts, um, good yield, yield of 6%. Currently trading on around an 8% discount, around 2 billion of assets. And it mentioned some companies like Henderson Far East Income or Schroeder Oriental Income. Um, and it has, a, again, a good dividend growth record over the last five years, 4.8%. 
Fantastic. And would you say generally, I mean, what we've seen a lot over the last um, couple of decades, it, there's, there's definitely been a shift away from domestic investing to global. Is this something you've seen in the AIC universe as well over the last 20 years? Well, I think it is the case. I have to say, I think investment trusts are a little bit different. As I've explained, we have these big global investment trusts with a very long history. But um, we also have extremely well-established UK companies. So I think we have seen more interest globally, um, but those UK companies with those long established records, fund managers which have been in position for a long time. And of course, although they invest in UK companies, a lot of the companies they invest in will be big companies. They'll be getting their revenue from around the world. So I think you're right. We have seen a transition, transition to global trusts, but we still have got this strong UK sector in this field, particularly for income seekers. Oh, well, that's great. Now, um, I mentioned dividend heroes at the beginning of this interview, which is a term the AIC coined. Could you just explain what a dividend hero is? And can you give us some examples, please? Absolutely. Well, I can tell you that uh, my uh, colleague and I came up with the term dividend hero in 2009, uh, just you know, during the financial crisis, very tough time for income seekers, a lot of companies really slashing their dividends. And people were, re investors really wanted to know that whether they could trust those dividends going forward, whether they were going to have see stability of, of dividend income. And we came up with dividend heroes. So it's what it is, is the companies that have increased their dividend every year for more than 20 years. Wow. And we actually have tw 20 companies now that have increased their dividends for more than 20 years. Um, and over a selection of sectors, but, you know, uh, a lot actually in the UK equity income and global sectors. So it's perfect that we're talking about those sectors right now. Um, we also have the uh, next generation of dividend heroes. And these are companies that have increased their dividends every year between 10 and 20 years. And we have 28 of those over a broad selection of sectors. I have to say about the dividend heroes that we actually have nine companies that have increased their dividends for more than half a century, more than 50 years. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of those that have got the longest record. I thought that would be interesting. So I have to mention the City of London Investment Trust. Uh, he's managed by um, a stalwart of the industry. I, I was very flattered that you described me as a stalwart at the beginning, but you know, Job Curtis has been managing that company for 32 years. Um, it's a UK equity income trust. It has got the longest record, 57 years of dividend growth. Um, and it's a big company. It's nearly 2 billion. Um, it's got a very attractive uh, yield of 5.1%. And it is trading pretty much at par at the moment. Um, which shows, I think, that uh, it, there's a lot of demand for it. It's tra trading at asset value. People want that stability of income. Um, and then moving on, we could talk about some of the global trusts here. So Bankers has got a 56-year record of dividend increase, uh, which, again, phenomenal. It's managed by a manager called Alex Crick, which I have to say every time I say his name, it makes me smile. He's a great manager. Um, it's got a 2.4% yield. It's in the global sector, so it's providing yield with combination of capital growth, which is why it's got that slightly lower yield. Um, it's called Bankers because it was set up by seven bankers. Um, and it's on a 14% discount. It's been performing very well. Um, and, you know, it's another great company. And then the last one I thought I'd mention is Alliance Trust. Again, on the 56 years of dividend increases, just quite incredible. Big company, 2.9 billion in size. 
2.3% yield, um, trade on a 6% discount. And, and what's interesting about this one, you know, and the manager I know there is Craig Baker. Uh, there's a couple of managers there, but they actually outsource the fund management to fund managers that usually uh, investors, only institutional investors can access. So it's quite good that us, us retail investors are getting, you know, a window on the, you know, the institutional world and getting access to these sorts of managers. Um, and it's been performing really well. It's up 16% over a year and up 199% over 10 years quite a big allocation to the US. That's brilliant. Thank you, Annabelle. Could you also, um, you know, before we wrap up, maybe, you know, remind some of our viewers of the differences between the closed end funds, i.e. investment companies and open ended funds, particularly when it comes to paying out income, because uh, I think a lot of investors aren't 100 percent sure about that. Yeah, well, it's actually a very important difference. Um, open ended funds when they receive income from the companies they invest in, they have to pay out all of that income to their unit holders, um, so to their investors. So what happens with open-ended funds is that in good years, they probably pay out, may perhaps a little bit more income than the investment companies, but in bad years, their income can really suffer because they can only pay out what they get in. Whereas with investment companies, they have a really unique income benefit. They um, are able to hold up to 15% of the income they receive from the companies they invest in, in their revenue reserves. And what they basically do is they hold it. And then when there's a rainy day, and what we know about investing is, unfortunately, there's always a rainy day. So say... Uh, recently or during the pandemic as a classic example or the financial crisis when times are tough when dividends are being cut then they can draw on that reserve to boost their dividends and that's why we have this incredible record of dividend increases which is something that is incredibly reassuring to investors um, and I'm going to give you a figure because I think this really demonstrates it uh, during 2020 during the pandemic um, we looked at the investment companies with a yield of more than one percent and 85 percent of them increased or maintain their dividends. We looked at the same sample for open-ended funds, 23% increased their dividends. None of them held them. Mm -hmm. And I think that just gives you an idea. If you're looking for that stability of income, that you know it's coming in, that you're relying on it, then the investment companies do have a great advantage. Fantastic, thank you. That's great, uh, Annabelle. Finally, I've got to ask you, what do you think of the premise of our note on income that investors should think and consider global sectors as, as well as the UK equity income sector? Well, I think you're right, actually, because I think it's very important that investors have a diversified portfolio. And it's very important if you're an income seeker that you're looking at the different sectors. I mean, I do think investors need to think about what they actually want. You know, are they looking for a high income now? Are they looking for a growing income? Are they looking for a combination of income and capital growth? Clearly, the global sector has got some advantages. You know, it's a bigger pool, bigger pond to fish in. There's more companies. There's a currency advantage, or there has been, obviously, with wheat pounds. Um, it's performed better over the long term. Now, of course, we don't know what's going to happen next. You know, clearly, the UK has been out of favour for a long time, really, since 2016 Brexit vote. It actually did perform better than the global sector last year. Its exposure to uh, energy, financials, obviously helped it in a high inflation environment. Um, so I think, it, you know, it's important to consider both and to have a diversified portfolio. But I think you're right it makes sense to look at the global sectors as well as the UK equity income sector. Uh, Annabelle, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. I've really enjoyed talking to you.
So uh, we, we recommend the AIC website for investors. It's got a wealth of resources there. Um, uh, you'll find more detail about uh, the Dividend Heroes that Annabelle's talked about on, on that website as well. And you can read the note that Ricardo and I wrote uh, on income uh, on the Harbin & Co website. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and join in the conversation wherever you're watching it. Uh, thank you very much and we'll see you next time.